This is Kathy from Gadget Stop 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be comparing the nibs of all my gold nib fountain pens. Uh, I'm going to rank them according to line width, and then I'll take a moment to discuss how the smoothness of each compare. These are all 14 karat gold nibs. I've got two sailors. The Pro Gear Slim has a fine nib, and the 1911 has a medium nib. I've got two Platinum 3776's, the one with gold trim has a fine nib and the one with silver trim has a medium nib. I have two Pilots, they both have fine nibs, I've got a Custom 74 and an E95S and the Lamy Studio has an extra fine nib. Now I'm going to write a little bit with each one and if I was going to be really scientific about this I would have put the same ink in each one but most of these were already inked up and had various inks in them and I've learned as I was putting this list together that um, the results you get are kind of dependent on what paper you use and what ink you have in your pen so some of these results will vary depending on those things. Now, the finest line put down by any of these pens is the Platinum 3776. And before I write with each one, I'm gonna show you what the tipping looks like on each. This 3776 fine nib has very little tipping on it and I've got this pen inked up with Pilot Orochizuku um, Murasaki Shikibu Alright, and really, these first two pens, you really could have gone either way with these. The Sailor Fine Nib in this Pro Gear Slim has very little tipping also. On the underside, you can kind of see there's a slight bevel to the tipping. There's a little bit more tipping than there was in the Platinum. and it's not rounded, it's got kind of a, a wedge shape, a bevel to it. And I have this one inked up with Diamine Oxford Blue. Now, I've had the lid off of this for a little while. a pretty dry writer. So these first two pens are pretty, they write so dry and have such fine nibs and such little tipping that it really depends on what ink you put in them and what paper you're using, the kind of results you'll, you get. I like to use a pretty lubricated ink and pretty smooth paper. Although the platinum tends to perform better on non-fountain pen friendly paper and the Pro Gear Slim tends to perform better on fountain pen friendly paper in my experience. All right, next is the um, Pilot Custom 74 and the tipping on this one is quite a bit different than the first two. There is a noticeable amount of tipping for a fine nib and it's rounded and you can feel that as you're writing. This pen is less dependent on what type of ink and paper you use because the nib is so smooth and round.
and it writes quite a bit wetter than the first two. Well, and that may depend on this ink. This particular ink, the Diamine um, Earl Grey, tends to feather and spread a little more, so some of that is from the ink. Next, I have the Pilot E95S. This was my first gold nib pen, and it's also a Pilot 14 karat fine nib, but it's significantly different than the Custom 74. It, the grind on the nib is quite a bit different. Like the sides are flat. It's rounded on bottom, but the sides are flat. And my particular pen, the tines are more parallel. They don't come together as much as my other pens do. They're a little more parallel. So this pen tends to write a little bit wetter. So I have it paired with a drier ink. Let's see. I've got uh, Graf von Faber-Castell Stone Gray in here, which is a drier ink, which pairs well with this uh, wet writer. And the fact that it writes wetter may tend to be what causes it to feel as smooth as it does. Let's see. Next is we're getting into medium nibs now. This is the Platinum 3776 with a medium nib. And it's got a little more tipping than the fine did, but it's it's not round like the Custom 74. It's kind of flat along the bottom. And you can feel that. It doesn't feel round. It feels flat but just the nature of it having more tipping there, uh, it feels smoother. I've got this pen inked up with Hiroshizuku Murasaki Shikibu also, like the first Platinum gives it a different look with it having a wider nib. Now so far these are all roughly in order the the line in order of line width and they are in order of smoothness as we go up this list we're going up in order of smoothness. I've got the Lamy Studio next. It's an extra fine nib and it has quite a distinctive grind. It's a, a very wedge-shaped grind to this nib. And it puts down for an extra fine. It writes pretty wet and puts down a decently wide line. And this nib and the Custom 74 are the two nibs on this list that I would say you can feel the bounce in the nib. I've got this one inked up with Lamy Blue Black, which I tend not to like when I use it in my steel nib Lamy pens. But uh, this Lamy Studio writes wet enough that it's a, a nice dark blue. And finally, last on the list is the Sailor 1911 Medium. And it, the grind on the nib has a similar shape to the Lamy. It's kind of got that wedge shape, not as pronounced as the Lamy, but a slight wedge shape. This 
is the standard nib. It writes pretty wet compared to the fine sailor nib and I've got this one inked up with Diatramentus Sherlock Holmes. And let's see, let's talk about the smoothness. The first two, the Platinum and the Sailor fine nibs, really, I would call them feedbacky. And they are very dependent on ink and paper. They're picky when it comes to ink and paper. Um, they're best on smoother paper and lubricated inks. Um, the Custom 74 is the one pen on this list that is least dependent on ink and paper. You can use pretty much any ink and paper. This uh, or Diamine Earl Grey that I have in here right now, I tried it in um, my Sailor pens. I tried it in the Sailor Medium and it just felt horrible. Uh, if I hadn't known any better, I would have you know, chalked that up to the sailor, but this this ink just did not work with it. But it's just fine in the pilot, and I think it's because it's got a decently wet nib and it's round, so it's not as affected by drier inks. And the smoothest out of all of these pens is the Lamy Studio. I'm going to look and see if I can find a better pen to put this nib in because I like the Lamy Studio, I like the look of it, but this metal section, I just don't use it that much. The metal section is just not comfortable for long-term writing. So this was a, a fun list to put together, uh, fun to think about, kind of surprising some of the things. Um, I gave my a group of my students a test yesterday, and when they got done, a couple of them asked, can we just color? And that's kind of what playing with my pens is to me. I like to come up here after a, a day of work and write with my pens and compare them and do lists like this and see which ones perform better with certain inks and certain papers. and it's just relaxing. It's it's like coloring for me. So hopefully you were able to get some useful information out of this video. And if you found this video helpful or interesting, please give me a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.